Hey guys, Becky here, 52 Baker. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to have you guys back for the Disney Princess inspired flower series. So this week we are doing Sleeping Beauty, also known as Princess Aurora, also known as Briar Rose. And given her name and the fact that she grew up in the wild, I thought it was appropriate to give her a wild rose. Now this doesn't look like the other roses. In my opinion, this doesn't even really look like a rose, but it is actually a rose. So these little cuties here are what we'll be making. I'm showing you how to make the pink one, but I also made them in blue, same process. You can make them in any color that you like. Now what I really like about the flowers this week is that the way I put them on the cake, they are meant to look a little more like a bush of wild flowers. So there's no one flower that will be the center focal point, so there's not a lot of pressure to get that one flower really perfect and really bright. You kind of just want to have a bunch and you want them to all look different and just have a bunch of movement. So if you have a flower that doesn't have very many petals because you ran out, no big deal, it's gonna be okay. If you have one that has a bunch of petals, that's also good. If one has broken petals, glue them back on there or just get rid of those extra petals, it's no big deal. Either way, as long as you have a bunch of color, a bunch of green, and they're all just moving, then you're pretty much good. So, let's get started. So we're gonna start off with our floral center. So these are two options that I use for the wild roses. The first is an embroidered thread. So I just tie a little knot at the bottom of a few threads or I grab a few and I fold them in half and then using a hook wire, I attach them by just twirling it around. The other option is a store-bought pistol and you can get these at Joann's or Amazon's. They come in a bunch of different colors and you do the same thing. You can just fold them in half and then with a the hook wire, just wrap the wire around to attach them. Both are really cute. The store-bought is very convenient, but what I like about the embroidered thread is that you can cut it down to whatever size you need. So that's what I'm going to use for today's flower. I just give it a straight lob off and then I give it a little bit of a fringe haircut and it looks frilly and cute. Now for the petals themselves, go ahead and roll out your flower paste as thin as you can without compromising it and using your cutter of choice, either a rose cutter or in this case a heart cutter, cut out as many petals as you want. To attach these to a wire, we're just going to go ahead and use some edible glue and sandwich the wire right in the center, only going up about halfway, if not a little bit less, and then pinching the flower paste around it. So you have a bunch of little, what look like lollipops. I'm not too worried about the wire because they're just such tiny little flowers. Go ahead and put those on your foam board and thin out the edges just a bit so that they're not as blunt. But again, these petals are super thin already so you don't have to thin out the entire thing. And I don't want to mess with the wire too much because the petal is very thin already. Once you have that all thinned out, if you like, you can go ahead and use a veiner. These flowers are so little that you can't really tell that the vein is on there because they're so clustered together and there are so many petals. So this really is optional. A lot of my flowers did not have a vein. Once you're all done, either rolling them or veining them, go ahead and roll the edges of the petals back either with your finger or with a toothpick and roll some forward, some back, lay them to dry on something that has shape and lay them in different positions so that they all have different movement. So I have some of mine on the top, some on the side, some on their back, some on the front every which way. Now for our leaves, these are gonna be super easy. Again, you just roll out your green leaf paste as thin as you can and pop out as many leaves as you want. 
Once you have them, put them on your foam board and thin out the edges again to remove some of the bluntness from the edge. And bring out your veiner if you're using one. Go ahead and press them all with your veiner. And the same way we did the petals, we're going to do the leaves. We just use a little bit of edible glue on our wire and then sandwich them in the center, like a little taco. You lay those to dry, and now once your flower petals are dry, you can go ahead and color them. So I'm using a darker shade of pink than what my flower paste is, and I just go on the center where the wire is, kind of to hide it a little and also to add a little bit of shadow where it would normally have a shadow. And then I dust the edges at the top a bit just to give it some more color and contour it just a bit. Any extra dust, I just wipe up and down so that it blends in a little bit better and it doesn't look so segmented in color. For the leaf, it's even easier. I'm really happy with the green color that my flower paste had. So I'm just taking the dark green that I have to help accent the veins on it a little bit more. So I just go up and down, front and back, just to catch the veins a little bit. And then with the brown, I go ahead and go across the edges just so that the edges pop a little bit more and then a little bit in the center where it's a little bit darker. Once your petals are all dry, you go ahead and you pick your center. And I'll go ahead and show you what each center looks like because I really like both and I think both are really good choices. So this is the embroidery thread. And then the store-bought pistols I think are so pretty, but they look a little bit too whimsical and not as realistic as I would like. So I went with the embroidery thread just for a shorter pistol. So once you have your center, go ahead and grab your floral tape, stretch it out to activate the stickiness, and then wrap it around your center a few times to make sure it's on nice and tight. Now with these petals, you don't have to worry very much about the placement and how to put it on here. You really just want to fill in spaces. So you start off with the first petal and then you add another and you keep going however it is that the flower goes. It'll look great. Each of my flowers have a different number of petals, a different number in the center, a different number outside. I'm just looking to fill in spaces and be happy with the flower. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. Also feel free to play with how open and closed you want the flower. You can make the center ones a little tighter. You can make the outer ones really open and fanned out. It's all your choice. Once you're done with the petals, go ahead and wrap your floral tape all the way down at a 45 degree angle. Now we're gonna start the calyx once we're all done assembling the flower head so that the calyx doesn't dry out in the meantime. So go ahead and grab your green paste and form a little hilltop center, thin out the rest, and then using a regular calyx cutter, just pop it out. On your foam board, go ahead and roll out the edges a bit just to remove some of the bluntness and some of the thickness that might still be there. But don't worry too much about the detail because these are tiny flowers. I pop in a little center hole in there to fit all of the petals that I have on my flower, add some edible glue, and then pop it right onto my flower. Now mine was much thicker than I needed, but that's no worry because you just pinch off whatever you don't need and adjust the rest. For these, even though I'm not doing any detail, any veining or cuts or anything, I still go ahead and with my finger, I pinch the edges and I shape them and just give them a little bit of movement. 
Now it's time to attach the leaves. So I go ahead and make my clusters of leaves by rolling floral tape down the center leaf and then adding any additional leaves I need and rolling the tape all the way down that. Once I have my cluster of leaves, I go ahead and roll some floral tape down my flower, the stem of it, and wherever I want to attach, I stop right there, bring in the cluster of leaves, and then keep rolling the tape down to attach. And then you're all done. You just do this a bunch of times and attach all the little flowers together until you're happy. And that's it guys. Hopefully you had fun with it. As always, if you have any questions, do drop them down in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you if you enjoyed this video. Please do give it a thumbs up and if you haven't yet, please consider hitting the subscribe notification button so that you know when I come out with more princess cakes, more flower tutorials, all that jazz. I'll see you guys next week.